Today I'm sharing outdoor decorating ideas, outdoor hacks, and summer DIY home decor. We are going to start off by creating a tabletop centerpiece with a fire element. I have this long rectangular glass container. I've used it for floral arrangements in the past, but today we are going to use it to create a mini fire pit. The first thing that I need are some rocks. At Home Depot, they had this large bag of marble chips. The entire bag was only $6.47. I'm going to add these marble chips to the center of my container. But before we do that, we want to protect our container. We don't want it to get scratched up. So I have these little foam pieces that I'm going to place in the bottom that will protect the container. Once that was in place, I just grabbed handfuls of those marble chips and placed them inside of my container. I spread these chips out equally. I added enough marble chips that they filled up my container about halfway. Now for our fire element. We are going to be using these quick flame gel chafing fuel. Now these are typically used to put underneath chafing dishes to keep your food warm, but we are going to use them in our container. So what I did was I took four of these and I placed them inside of my container. I just nestled them right in between the marble chips. I made sure that all four of them were spread out equally in my container. What's really great about these is that they won't burn out like a candle does when it's windy. But because we have it inside of our container, it has those four sides, so it's going to protect it anyway. And it has a very long life, so it's going to be able to keep your centerpiece lit all night long. This is a beautiful centerpiece to have on your outdoor dining table. It was so easy to create and very inexpensive. All we needed was some marble chips and the quick flame gel chafing fuel. It will add the perfect amount of ambiance to your evening dining. The warm glow of the fire will be a beautiful addition to your dining experience. So not only does it have the perfect amount of ambiance, but it's double duty. Not only is it a centerpiece, but it's also going to help you in your dessert. What you can do is get some sticks, put some marshmallows on them and create some s'mores right there at the table. Let's move on and create another very inexpensive, super easy lighted centerpiece. This time we're going to start off with some Dollar Tree vases. These are the taller vases and what we're going to do with these is just simply get those marble chips and place those inside as well. So I grabbed handfuls of these marble chips and placed them into both of the vases about two thirds of the way up. If your vase was large enough, you could add some chafing gel to the top and have a fire element that way. But what I'm going to do is get some puck lights. I found a package of two at Dollar General. These are so great for outdoor ambiance because all you have to do is just press them and they turn right on and you've got some light. I'm going to take my puck lights and I'm going to place them right on top of the rocks inside of my vase. And now we have another way to add ambient lighting to our outdoor dining. Not only are these a great idea for a centerpiece outside, but you could get a whole bunch of these and line a walkway or a driveway because it's got rocks in the bottom, they're weighted, so they're not going to tip over if it's windy, and it would be a very cheap beautiful way to light up a pathway. So now we're going to set our dining table outside. What we're going to do is start off with a cream placemat. This is a nice neutral backdrop and then I'm also going to put down a gold vinyl runner in the center. To create our place settings I'm going to get a pink charger and on top of the charger I'm going to place this blue and white gingham resin plate. This is such a fun summer design and color scheme. So I'm just going to pop this plate right on top. And then to tie the color scheme that we're going for together, I have these little mini square plates that have some birds and branches, little leaves on them that have the blue and the pink and some pops of green on them. This plate will make our table setting cohesive. And because this is a summer outdoor setting, we are going to go bold in our color choices. So I'm gonna use this hot pink napkin. Now I don't typically go for the ultra bright color scheme, but summer is the time where you can get out those vibrant colors and 
use them to your advantage. I pulled our napkin through a wood beaded napkin ring. This napkin ring gives this place setting a casual feeling and it also adds to the summer vibe. Right now on my centerpiece, I have my two lighted bases and then in the center I have a floral arrangement. And I kept the colors in the floral arrangement similar to our place settings with the creams and the pinks to tie it all together. I like to give my guests a parting gift when they leave so they have something to remember our evening together. The parting gift that we're gonna give our guests this time is a flower. Now, Home Depot or Lowe's or even Walmart have such a huge variety of flowers this time of year and they are so inexpensive. I picked up these two beautiful bright pink flowers and they were only $1.98 a piece. And what I'm gonna do with these is I'm simply just going to transfer them into a pot. This is just a plastic pot, very inexpensive. And then I got a tulle ribbon and wrapped it around the container and tied it into a bow. Now I can take my potted flower and place it next to each one of my place settings. If you wanted to, you could get a whole bunch of these potted plants and use them as a centerpiece and run them down the center of your table that would be a beautiful way to get a centerpiece and a parting gift. And if flowers are too expensive or if you just don't want to do that, you can always get a seed packet. You can buy those at the Dollar Tree. You can get them very affordably and just tie a ribbon around those and place them in the center of each one of your place settings. That would be another easy, cheap way to give someone a gift. Either one of these options would work and be a charming keepsake for each one of your guests to take home. Our next hack is also gonna help us to organize our paper towels. This week, we are having a family reunion at our house and I'm going to have 15 people staying here the entire week. So we're gonna be outside a lot, doing a lot of fun things, but it's hot, so we're gonna be having a lot of snacks, popsicles, all kinds of stuff. So having paper towels outside is going to be essential. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna get a hanger. This is just a plain white hanger and some wire cutters. I'm going to cut this hanger right in the middle. Okay, now it's open like this. I can slide my paper towels right into this hanger like this. And now I can take this outside and we can have paper towels outside. So this is going to be great for snacks. This is also going to be awesome if you had a project going on in your garage, you wanted a temporary place to hang some paper towels. Just get a plastic hanger, put your paper towels on it, and you have a great organizer. I love decorating with glass jars, apothecary jars, and cloches. So we're gonna make some vase fillers for our apothecary jars and this cloche. We're gonna start off with a wood round. I got this package at Michael's. We're gonna be using four of them. What we're going to do to these wood rounds is we're going to Mod Podge some tissue paper over the top. I found this gorgeous V tissue paper at Ross. This package was $2.99. This tissue paper was actually my inspiration for this whole design. I love these gold bees on this tissue paper. I'm going to cover both sides of my wood rounds. So what I did was I folded my tissue paper in half I took my wood round, I placed it on top of the tissue paper, got a pencil, traced around the wood circle, and then cut out each circle to give me my eight circles. Next, I got some Mod Podge and a sponge brush, and I painted on the Mod Podge to the surface of the wood round. Once it was completely covered in the Mod Podge, I grabbed a circular tissue paper and I placed it over the top of the Mod Podge. Then I got my Cricut scraper and I pressed it firmly to the wood round. This helps to make it lay flat and gives out any air bubbles trapped underneath the tissue paper. Once the tissue paper was flat against the surface of the wood round, I repeated the process with the remaining three circles and then I let them dry for one hour. I came back and I flipped these circles over 
I added some more Mod Podge to the top, got my round tissue paper circle and placed that over the top and then pressed it to the wood round with my scraper tool. Again, I repeated this process with the remaining three circles and then I let it dry for another hour. My tissue paper extended slightly beyond the edge of my circular round. To remedy this problem, I got some sandpaper and I sanded the edges of the wood rounds. This took off the excess tissue paper along the perimeter. Now I have a smooth edge on each of my wood rounds. At this point, I got some more Mod Podge and I painted on a thin layer over the top of each of my four wood rounds. I let that dry for an hour, I flipped them over and I repeated the process of painting on the Mod Podge to the second side and then I let them dry completely, which took another hour. Now I have these fantastic wood rounds that I put inside of my apothecary jar. They're so unique, I've never seen anything like this before. And it's a beautiful addition, a subtle addition, a personalized piece, and customizes this perfectly to my bee-themed tablescape. Our next project is another filler for our glass apothecary jar and our cloches. I found these glass orbs at Ross and we're going to customize them to fit in with our theme. The way we're going to do that is by creating a vinyl decal. I just got a stock decal of a bee on my Cricut Design Space. My Cricut Maker cut it out on some gold removable vinyl. I'm using removable vinyl so I can take this decal off and use these glass orbs in a different holiday or season. So what I did is I just put this B decal in the center of my glass orb. I pressed it firmly to the glass and then I removed the transfer tape. I repeated this process on my second glass orb and I love the way that this B decal elevates the look of these glass balls. Now I'm going to add my B rounds and my glass orbs inside of my jar. I also added some twine covered balls and some raffia covered smaller decorative balls. I put all those inside of my jar and then I placed my apothecary jar on top of a marble riser to give my jar some height. Now that our glass apothecary jar is completed, we are going to move down here to our cloche. I took my cloche and I added that second glass orb to the center. I put another one of those wood rounds with the bee tissue paper and a raffia covered smaller ball. I placed the glass cloche over the top of a hexagonal marble tray. It looks like a honeycomb. Huh? I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I've got bees on the brain. So that contributes to the overall feeling of the bee in the display. And then around the top, I placed a glass tassel garland. I like using unique containers for my floral arrangements. I've used soup trays in the past and I'm going to use it again today. In fact, this particular soup terrain, I've used more for floral arrangements than I have for soup. So. It does double duty. I love the shape of this soup terrain. It's an oval shape and it has a gorgeous detail on the front. I like using the tape grid method. It cuts down on floral foam and it holds my flowers upright and in place. So I created a tape grid over the top of my soup terrain container. The florals that I chose for this arrangement are wisteria, hydrangea and some roses. I'm gonna start off with my wisteria. I took my stem of wisteria and I bent the stem and then I placed it inside of my tape grid. Next, I took my French blue hydrangeas and I placed those in various areas throughout the arrangement. And finally, I got my cream pinky colored roses. I took those individual stems and I placed those sporadically throughout the arrangement. 
The final addition that I'm going to make to this arrangement is some lamb's ear. This lamb's ear is so pretty and it has a velvety touch, which adds a great texture to this arrangement. Again, I just placed those lamb's ear stems sporadically throughout the arrangement, filling in any vacant spaces. Now that we're all finished, I placed my beautiful floral arrangement right here in the center of my tablescape. I love the way that this floral arrangement brings in some freshness, brings in a natural element, and it really elevates the entire look of this tablescape. Let's move on to our free printable. Now it's been a while since I've done a free printable, so I figured it was about time. What I did was I just created this French bee design and I printed it out. The frame that I'm using is a mirrored frame, which coordinates with the frames that I have on either side of my large mirror. I purchased this particular frame at Home Goods. I took my French B printable and I placed it in the center of my frame. I got some double-sided tape and I placed a piece at the top of the picture and one at the bottom. The tape will hold the B picture in place. After my print was in the frame, I simply put the back piece of the frame back on and now I have a beautiful printable. I placed my picture on top of a black frame holder, which elevates the piece and gives another element of height variation to my tablescape. This was such an easy and affordable way to theme this tablescape. All I had to do was create this particular picture, put it in a frame that I already had and display it. The only additional piece that I added to my tablescape was this finial right here. I placed it on top of an upturned napkin holder to give it some height. I love how it's antiqued and a little distressed, which adds to the French feel that I'm going for. I am so in love with the way that this tablescape turned out. It's a subtle theme that I can leave out all summer long and it does give off those summer vibes in a unique and classy way. We're gonna start off by dressing our outdoor dining table. I love having a dining table outside. So what we're gonna do with our table, first of all, is that we need to wash it because it's been out here for a while and it's dirty, it's dusty, it needs to be cleaned. So I'm gonna wipe it down really well and now it's prepped and ready for us to set the table. You can go in so many directions when you set an outdoor table. What I'm gonna do is put some placemats down and a runner. These are gold and they're geometric. They're really bright and airy for summertime. On top of my placemats, I'm going to put some plates. These are white plates with a silver rim around it. And then in the center of those plates, I'm going to place a shell plate. These are adorable. I got them at Michael's a couple years ago and I love the way they look. They really bring in that outdoor summer fun element. On top of that, I have some cloth napkins. They're teal and sea blue, just perfect for the look that I'm going for. And I put a gold napkin ring around these napkins and place them in the center of the shell plate. And then of course, we've got our cups and our cutlery that we're placing on each place setting. And then for our centerpiece, I'm going to be using two lanterns with some battery operated candles in them and a white floral arrangement in the center. And just like that, look how elevated this dining table looks. Being outside gives you that opportunity to get that fresh air in. You've got beautiful scenery. Dining outside is also perfect if you have a whole lot of guests because you can just pull up chairs and people can be wandering about and you have that extra space to entertain. I also love the change of scenery from dining inside to dining outside. It gives you a little bit of a variety. Being in nature and enjoying a meal outdoors can help you feel more relaxed and calm. Plus, I can have the fountains on in the background and I love listening to the sound of the water trickling into the pool. It definitely elevates the entire dining experience. My next tip is to have several different conversation areas. 
I have, of course, this dining table right here where people can sit and eat and enjoy each other's conversation. But I also have a love seat and two chairs with a coffee table where people can sit and relax and stay there for hours and hours and hours. And then I have a more intimate seating arrangement over by the hot tub. I've got two chairs over there where you can have a quiet one-on-one -on -one conversation. You're gonna to wanna to measure your space before you go buy your furniture. That way you know that it's the right size. It's not too big, it's not too small. You're also gonna to wanna to get comfortable furniture because hopefully like me, you like to spend a lot of time outside and you wanna be comfortable while you're doing it. And along with that, you wanna make sure you have really durable outdoor fabrics on your furniture. Another way that makes your outdoor space feel so luxurious is by using a fire pit or some kind of fire element. I love the way the warmth of the fire glows in your space. It illuminates things and it also can bring warmth to your space, which can extend your outdoor living season. If it can warm you up just a little bit, that means you can stay out there even longer. It creates a cozy and warm atmosphere so you can sit and chat for hours and hours and hours with your friends and your family. It also, of course, provides light, which is fantastic when you're outside, especially at night. I personally do not have a fire pit in my backyard, but I have done something to get that same fire element in the past. I headed to the Dollar Tree and I got some food warmers for chafing dishes and I got a wooden box and I filled it with some rocks and then I put these food warmers in the box and then I made some s'more sticks. I put together a little s'more station with all kinds of chocolates and cookies and marshmallows it was such a fun event for my kids. In fact, we have used it time and time again for parties or when the kids have friends over. It's a way to get a fire element and also a s'more station for just a few dollars. So if you don't have a budget for a fire pit right now, this is a great alternative. Fire definitely gives us an ambient glow, but let's talk about some other ways that we can bring in some lighting in our outdoor space. The first one is with some lanterns. I've got this big one right here that I have a candle inside, and then I have the lanterns that are on my dining table. I've also put lanterns on my front porch before. Instead of putting candles inside, I put flowers inside. This was such a fun alternative because I love having flowers that brighten up a space in summertime, especially outdoors. So swapping a candle for a floral arrangement in this instance was such a fun idea. Lanterns are also really great to have outside because they are typically made with a durable material so they can withstand all of the elements. Another item that I have used in the past are some string lights. I don't have any up right now, but I think that they are so fun, especially for a party in the summer. You can buy string lights at all of the major stores. I found some great ones at Target. They come in a variety of different sizes and you can string them up all over the place. You can wrap them around a tree. You can wrap them around a column outside. You can put them on an umbrella. There are so many ways that you can bring in these adorable string lights into a place and it makes your outdoors feel so magical. Like when you go to a restaurant and they have lights hanging everywhere, well, these lights give you that same effect, that same feeling. Of course, you have to talk about candles when we're talking about ambient lighting and they go along really well with lanterns because you can put candles inside of your lanterns. I have a large candle inside of this lantern right here and then I also have some battery operated candles in my lanterns that are on my dining table. Another thing about candles is that you can get some citronella candles that will keep those bugs away when you're outside. You can also get a candle that has a tropical scent so you feel like you're on a tropical vacation somewhere and smelling the pina coladas. Another way that you can entertain beautifully outside is by bringing a little bit of the inside outdoors. What I have is this gorgeous bar cart that I have wheeled outside and it's going to be a great place to put my drinks and some snacks. On top of my bar cart, I have a bowl that I filled with ice. Now, if you don't have an ice bucket, just get one of your large kitchen bowls, fill it up with some ice and then put your drinks inside. I put in some peach flavored sparkling water and then I also have 
some cookies that I put on top of a cake stand and covered with a cloche. And then I also have this towel right here so that people can dry their hands off once they get their water out of the ice bucket. Sometimes it's a little wet. So this is a great idea. You can hang up a towel. And of course, it's so convenient because you can just kind of wheel it back and forth, bring it over there, bring it over there. You can have snacks that you can serve to everybody. So a bar cart really is a fun item to take outside, use it during a party, and then you can put it back inside when you're finished. Potted plants and flowers are another way to make your outdoor space feel so tropical and lush. Now, for many of you that know me and have been with me for a while, you know that I am no gardener. <laughs> I cannot keep anything alive. And by the good graces of the Florida sunshine and the rain, I have some flowers that have been alive for a very long time, no thanks to me. But if you are a gardener, I can imagine that your space would be beautifully decorated with all kinds of potted plants and flowers. Using flowers are a great way to bring in a bright pop of color. You can select flowers in a theme. You can go with a sunset theme or a spring theme or a neutral theme. You can stick to one type of flower or you can choose a variety of different flowers and plants. Another thing that I love about potted plants and flowers is that they are low maintenance and that you can move them around from place to place. So if you don't want this potted plant here, you can move it to another location. If you're gonna have a big rainstorm, you can bring those potted plants inside. And they're also a great space saver because you can get a variety of different sized pots. I have some large ones here, but you can get some smaller ones. You can buy some at the Dollar Tree that are really affordable. You can get some at Target or Walmart and they have beautiful shapes. There's so many different designs that you can choose when it comes to choosing a container for your plants. So add a little bit of personality to your backyard by choosing some potted plants or flowers to beautify the space. So if you're like me and gardening isn't your strong suit, what you can do is bring some artificial flowers outside as well. Don't be ashamed, I do it all the time. And there are really some great benefits to using some faux flowers outside. Number one is that they're really durable, so you can leave them outside and you know that they're not gonna get ruined. These are a very low maintenance, which is my favorite thing. I don't have to water them. I don't have to worry about bringing them in and out of the sun. I just leave them in this beautiful container and they are self-sufficient, which is perfect for my lifestyle. Another thing is that they are really cost-effective. You can buy some really affordable faux flowers. They will last long-term and they do not need to be replaced frequently. And you can easily change these out seasonally. You could do some beautiful fall leaves. You could do all kinds of things for different changing holidays and seasons. And then when you're done with your party or your entertaining evening, you can bring these flowers back inside and put them where they belong. Next, let's talk about pillows and textiles. I love the warmth that textiles bring to an outdoor space. We're gonna start off by talking about rugs. Rugs are fantastic in an outdoor area. It can define a seating area. We are also a shoes off kind of family during the summer, so it's nice to have a rug to step on and have that relief from the concrete. Rugs are also a great way to bring in some pattern or color into your space. If you have a specific color scheme that you're going for, a rug is a great way to introduce that color or reinforce that color in your outdoor space. You can even coordinate your outdoor space with your indoor space through rugs. Rugs are also super durable and you can get them in so many different places, especially right now, and you can buy some extremely affordably. Another textile that I love using in my outdoor space are pillows. I've got these blue pillows. They are such a fun pop of color out here. I love the blue. It goes along perfectly with this outdoor space. Pillows are great because if you're sitting in an outdoor space for a long period of time, you wanna be comfortable. So pillows are great for that. You're also going to want to make sure that if you do get some pillows for your outdoor that it's covered in some durable fabric. Make sure it's an outdoor fabric that can withstand all of the elements that come along with being outside. So pillows are a great way to enhance that functionality and comfort of your space outside. 
Another way to keep comfortable outside for long periods of time is by making sure that you've got some blankets outside. I like to bring a basket full of blankets outside when I entertain, especially in the evening time. That way people can cozy up in these blankets, stay comfortable and keep warm. Now it doesn't really cool down a whole lot here in Florida during the summer in the evening time, but I know in the majority of places it does. I put my blankets in a large basket that has handles on it. That way I can move it in and out of the house. You can also put towels in baskets like these just to fill them up. It's a great and convenient way to organize your towels. You can easily bring them in and out of the house. Once everybody's done using your towel, you can put it in the basket, take it to your laundry room and put everything in the washing machine. So baskets are a great way to organize some textiles outside, your blankets, your towels, and it can also be a great way to bring in some color and overall just make your space feel just a little more luxurious. You could also get some smaller baskets to organize your toys. You could put all your pool toys in here, your frisbees, some games. You could even store some refreshments in baskets during a cookout. There's a lot of things you can do with baskets. You can use some woven ones like this or just get some plastic ones at the Dollar Tree. Those are really easy to clean and you can get some pretty decently sized bins and baskets at the Dollar Tree. So if you wanna organize your outdoor space, using baskets are a fantastic idea. Let's talk about the number one way to make your space feel more luxurious. It is to keep it clean. <laughs> that is a dilemma here because we've got so many kids and so many activities and obviously we've got rain and dirt and all kinds of other things. So keeping your outdoor space clean is, it's a problem, right? We've got to keep on it all the time. But when you do, gosh, does it look amazing? So if you're having a hard time, getting the motivation or the energy to really want to get out there and clean, I have some suggestions for you. <laughs> Plan a party, because if you have a party and people are coming over, guess what? You're going to clean that outdoor space. And guess what I had to do? I had to do a YouTube video in order for me to really roll up my sleeves and get to work out here. But what I did do was I recruited my family to help, which is what you can do too. Got my boys helping me. Good activity for a Saturday afternoon, right? Get out and get some chores done. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's important to have your kiddos help clean up. I want to instill in my kids hard work and by participating in chores around the house, that's a great way to instill one of those values. So get your family involved in helping you clean up. That way it doesn't all fall on your shoulders and you feel like you have to do it yourself. So we scrubbed down the patio, we scrubbed down the chairs, the tables, all kinds of other things to really make this place sparkle and shine. After a long winter and spring, your space can get pretty dirty. And so just get the broom out, clean up everything. It will make your space look a hundred times better, just like mine did when we were finished cleaning up. And don't worry, when we were done cleaning, I gave my boys some cupcakes. So they got their reward. Our first project is to take this jar that I found at the thrift store and transform it. If you can't find a jar like this, just go look in your pantry. You could use an empty vinegar jar, oil jar, or an apple cider jar to use in this project. What I loved about this was the size and the shape. To transform it, I'm just going to be using some craft paint. I got some white, gold and navy craft paint at Michael's. Do not worry about getting anything fancy for this project. The cheapest craft paint you can find will work. The first thing I did was I took my white craft paint and I squeezed about half the bottle of paint into the jar. I let it run down the sides and depending on the size of your jar is the amount that you'll need. Once I was finished with my white paint, I moved on to the gold paint and I squeezed that paint into the jar and let it run down the sides. And finally, I did the navy blue paint. Once I had all three of my selections in my jar, I took my jar and I gave it a good shake. Shaking the jar will marbleize the paint and softens the edges from one color of paint into the other. You could also gently roll the paint around, but it takes longer and I'm impatient. So shaking it worked for me. Once it was completely covered in the paint on the inside of the jar, I flipped it upside down 
and let the excess paint drain out into a plastic cup. I left it upside down overnight to drain all of the paint out and also to let it dry. The next morning I flipped it right side up and I loved the streaks that it left. The striations were so pretty and the marbled effect was gorgeous. This paint technique elevated this glass jar into something that you would see at the Pottery Barn or Anthropology for an exorbitant price. And all we did was we took an empty glass jar and filled it with paint. How easy is that? And I love the way it looks. I took the lid that was on the top of the jar and I decided I wanted to spray paint it gold. So I used some Rust-Oleum gold brass spray paint. I saturated the lid in the paint and then I let it dry for 20 minutes. I wanted the lid to be gold just in case I wanted to leave the jar as is. I could add it with several other jars to make a display. So I wanted to have that option. I wanted to add one more touch to this jar and that was to add a chain detail, kind of like these links around the neck of the jar. I used my scraper tool to press the vinyl firmly together and then my weeding tool to first get those circles out and then I pulled the excess vinyl away from the border. Once I transferred the vinyl onto the transfer tape, I took it and I placed it around the neck of the jar. I got my scraper tool and I pressed the vinyl onto the jar. Then I removed the transfer tape. I love this additional touch. I wanted to elevate this jar even further but I didn't want to cover up the beautiful striations, stripes, and marbling from the paint. So this nautical chain detail is a fitting accent. Finally, I added two stems of gold branches that I got at Michael's. They remind me of coral, so they fit in perfectly with the nautical and coastal theme. I see wall hangings like this all of the time at my local thrift store. All it is is a giant piece of wood with a picture on it. So we're gonna turn it into a blank canvas so I can hang these three pieces of coral art. The first thing I did was I took this board outside and I got some gold rust spray paint. I painted a thorough coat. I covered up that flower really well in the paint. I sprayed along the edges and I made sure that the top surface was completely covered in the paint and then I let it dry for 30 minutes. I repeated the process with the second coat of paint. I fully saturated the sides and the top of this wall art one more time to make sure that it was 100% gold and then I let it dry overnight. If you can't find a piece of wall art like this, just go to Lowe's or Home Depot and buy an inexpensive piece of board there and paint it. It'll be just as affordable and it will be a great neutral backdrop for you to add whatever piece of art that you would like to the top. So I'm going to add some coral art and I got these frames which are going to be perfect in my display. The white and the gold, I got these at the Dollar Tree. To the glass, I'm going to add some coral. On my Cricut Design Space, I hit New Project, I clicked Image, and in the search bar, I typed in Coral. Several options came up. I scrolled down to this because it had three distinct coral shapes. I selected it and clicked Insert Image, brought it to my Design Space. I hit Ungroup so I could separate them. I didn't need this outline, so I selected and deleted it. Then I selected the red coral, I went to the size and I knew the width that I wanted was six inches. So I typed six on the width and it auto filled the height. I selected my second curl, typed six on the width and it auto filled the height. And then finally I selected my third curl. I typed in six on the width and it auto filled the height. At this point, I went over to make it. It sorted it onto my mats. There are three mats. I clicked continue which brought me to my materials selection. I selected vinyl, and then I did more on the pressure. To ensure my vinyl stays firmly to the mat, I'm adding a little bit of blue painter's tape to the corners. 
I loaded the vinyl into the mat by hitting the flashing arrow button and then started the cutting by hitting the flashing C button. It loaded this into my mat and began the cutting process. Once it was finished, I hit the flashing arrow button, which released my mat, and now I have my coral. On my design space, I selected the second mat and it began cutting that. Once it was finished, I selected the third mat and it cut that coral as well. Once I was finished with the three corals, I hit finish on my computer. I removed the excess vinyl away from the coral with my weeding tool. I just pulled it away and it came right up. Then I had my coral. I took my transfer tape next, peeled it away from the backing, placed it in the center of my vinyl coral, and then got my scraper tool and pressed the transfer tape firmly to the vinyl and then removed the backing from the vinyl. I took the glass out of the frame, then I put my vinyl coral in the center. I got my scraper tool and I pressed it firmly to the glass and then I removed the transfer tape. Are you guys ready for those free printables? Well, it's time. The backdrop that I have on these frames, I created. I wanted a white and gold and navy kind of different colored blues that reminded me of waves, so I just made it myself. If you would like to use these printables as a backdrop in your art, I will leave a link in my description box so you can print them off and have them at home. I'm going to place the glass back into the frame, then I'm going to get my first printable, lay it behind the glass, and then replace the backing. Once my first piece of coral art was finished, I moved on to the second. I added the vinyl coral to the glass, I put my second printable behind the glass and placed everything back into the frame. And then I repeated the process with the third coral. I added it to the glass, put the printable behind, and then placed the backing on the frame. And now I have three very inexpensive pieces of coral art. You could stop here if you wanted to. You could hang these up on a wall and they'd be fantastic, but I wanted to create one singular piece of art so we're gonna pull back in this wall art that we spray painted gold. I'm going to get a screw and I'm going to put it in the center of the wall art. I got my yardstick and a ruler. I measured the middle and then I screwed it in with my screwdriver. On the back of the frame, there's a little hook and I just hooked that right onto the screw. Then I measured my second placement for my second screw, screwed that in out of the middle piece of coral art. And finally, I moved on to the bottom piece. I measured it once again, added that screw, and then put that frame right on the screw. Now I have one singular piece of art. How gorgeous is this? Again, if you were at some kind of department store, this would be so expensive. And all we did was took an outdated piece of wall art and transformed it. And the transformation is so dramatic. Simply by recycling a thrifted piece of wall decor and adding on three Dollar Tree frames with coral vinyl inside, we got an expensive look for a very affordable price. Initially, what caught my eye with this container was this blank space down below. I thought, how fun would that be to fill that with some sand and some shells and customize this piece into a nautical themed base. The first thing that we're going to do is create a sleeve to go on the inner container. There are two containers, one that's on the inside and one that's on the outside. So we're going to put the sleeve around the inside container. I found some wrapping paper at the Dollar Tree it has a lovely gold accent and it contrasts with a tan, almost butcher paper, which I thought was reminiscent of sand. I added some double-sided tape to the container and then placed my wrapping paper over the top of the double-sided tape. Once it was wrapped around the container, I trimmed off the excess wrapping paper around the bottom. I wanted to add some anchors to the sleeve, so I got some Cricut shimmery party foil and I'm going to make the anchors out of this navy blue party foil. On my Cricut design space, I hit new project, I selected images, 
in the search bar, I typed in anchor and a lot of options came up and I scrolled down until I found this anchor right here. I selected it and hit insert image, took it to my design space. I put the size I needed as far as the width goes and then it auto filled the height. Once I had my size, I hit the duplicate button and then I moved them around. You don't have to do it, it'll sort it, but you know, it just made me feel better to do it myself, I guess. And then I hit make it, which sorted it onto my mat, and then I clicked continue. At this point, I selected my material, which was a foil poster board, and then I hit more on the pressure. I hit the flashing arrow button, which loaded my mat into my Cricut Maker, and then I hit the flashing C button, which began the cutting process. I punched out my four anchors and now I can add them to the top of my wrapping paper. Again, I'm going to be using some double-sided tape. I placed the tape on the back of the anchor and then pressed it onto the wrapping paper. I repeated the process with the remaining three anchors. I placed them evenly around the perimeter of the container. The shimmery navy blue is a great contrast against the more matte wrapping paper. Also, the color is a stark contrast, which makes the anchor stand out as a focal point. I added the sand and the shells to the bottom of the container. First, I poured in some sand, spread that out a little bit, and then I got some shells. Now, these shells are from the Dollar Tree, and I liked them because they were flat, so they would fit underneath the container. I spread those out and kind of nestled those into the sand and then I placed my inside container over the top. I'm adding a variety of hydrangeas to this arrangement. I love using that tape grid method, so that's what we're gonna do. I got some scotch tape, and I ran two lines of scotch tape from left to right, and two lines of scotch tape from the bottom to the top to create my grid. I'm adding a variety of hydrangeas to my arrangement. I actually got these white hydrangeas at the Dollar General. I never look for flowers at the Dollar General, but I saw them the other day and they were only a dollar. So I'm definitely gonna look at the Dollar General for flowers from now on. I also had some blue hydrangeas from the Dollar Tree. I also love using the method where I bend the stems. So that's what I did. I took the floral stems, folded them in half, and then wiggled them into the spaces between the tape grid. Once all the hydrangeas were in place, I added a few leaves to complete the arrangement. What a transformation. This container looked like something that you would just toss out and wouldn't even feel bad about it, but I'm glad somebody kept it and I'm glad that I found it because I'm going to be able to use this container for all kinds of seasons. I could add some fall leaves in the autumn time. I could add some fake snow in the winter time, some mini eggs in the springtime. And because we didn't do anything permanent to this container, I'll be able to use it again and again, and I can change the wrapping paper or I can use scrapbook paper for the sleeve. There are so many options and so many ways that I can customize this particular container to accommodate different seasons. To create this display, I'm starting off with a tan fishing net in the place of a tablecloth. I added our blue and gold jar with the tall gold floral stems to the left. In the center and in the prominent spot, we have our beautiful piece of coral wall art. Then I placed the nautical floral arrangement on top of a weathered box. In the center, I'm placing these wood link objects. I made these as a pottery barn dupe last summer, so if you wanna see how I made those, I will leave a link to that video in my description box. And then I also added in some shells I have a beautiful gold larger shell that I added some shells inside and then I just scattered some throughout the tablescape. The 
first thing we're gonna do is make a runner out of our greenery. Now, the benefit of living in Florida is that you have beautiful greenery all year long. I just got this from my yard. I have a palm tree and I have a beautiful magnolia tree. So I just did a little uh, trimming and I got some great greenery for my runner. I'm placing the leaves on top of each other and I'm staggering a bit so they look a little more natural and organic. And I'm leaving some gaps in my table so that I can put my hurricane candles and little votive vases. I'm placing my hurricane candle holders symmetrically in the center of my runner and interspersing my magnolia flowers between. The variation in height and size gives extra interest to my table and the candlelight will provide a beautiful warmth and glow, especially while dining in the evening. We're gonna start off with these placemats. I got them at Home Goods, and they kind of remind me of coral. They'll be perfect. And then I also have these chargers. They're from the Dollar Tree, and they have a nice wood grain, and so it'll bring in a little bit more of that coastal feel. I'm gonna use a white plain ceramic plate. On top of this plate, I'm gonna place a turquoise napkin. I got these at JCPenney, and napkins are a great way to introduce color because you can have some vivid pops of color, but it doesn't overwhelm your tablescape. So I'm gonna place this on top of my plate, and then on top of my napkin, I'm gonna put this shell salad plate, which again, helps to reinforce our coastal feel. Terrariums can be expensive, so I was excited when I saw this plastic terrarium on the Dollar Tree website. The only caveat is that you have to buy them in bulk. It's a case of 24. Uh, they just ship it straight to your local Dollar Tree and you just pick it up there. If you're interested, I'll leave a link in the description box below. These are the perfect size for my table setting and I prefer them being plastic because I know if they're dropped, they won't shatter, which is key when you've got little ones. And at a dollar a piece, they're a steal. The sand, the shells, and this artificial greenery is all from Michael's, and I used my 40% off coupon, so I got some good deals. We're gonna start off by putting the sand in our terrarium first, and then we'll add the rest. I used a large measuring spoon to scoop in about a cup of sand, and then I smoothed it out into an even surface. The only difference between my terrarium and the Pottery Barn terrarium is that theirs has an air plant in it. I'm using artificial because if you know anything about me, you know that I am no gardener, so I'm not taking any chances. I got this greenery at Michael's for 40% off, and what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna snip off the ends, and then I'm gonna stick it inside my terrarium, and the sand will hold it in place. A few alternatives that you could use instead of these grassy stems could be a succulent, a small cactus, or some bright summer flowers. After you have it to the size that you want, I'm just taking this moss. I already have this moss, so this isn't gonna cost me anything. I'm gonna place a little bit down first inside, and then I'll stick my little plants right inside of the moss. I was pleasantly surprised at how well the sand held the greenery in place. The key is making sure that there is enough sand in your terrarium. The sand alone will support and hold up your greenery without the addition of floral foam. I got a bag of shells at Michael's for $5.49, and there were enough shells in it that I could spread it out equally amongst my four terrariums. These shells were a perfect match to my inspiration piece shells. I simply spaced them evenly around my greenery to provide that beachy nautical feel and finishing touch. Here's the Pottery Barn Inspiration Terrarium, priced at $34.50 a piece. And here's my look for less terrarium at a grand total of $3.18 a piece. An almost identical piece of decor for over $31 less. On top of my terrarium, I'm gonna add a fun beach-themed quote, along with some coordinating turquoise ribbon. You could just leave it plain, but I like adding a little extra. You could put the menu on there, you could put place cards, or you could put your favorite beach that you've traveled. And this is a perfect favor for your guests to take home. I know that I would love to take this home. And for $3.18, it's the perfect price. I printed off one of my favorite summer sayings and punched out a hole in my paper so I could thread my color-coordinated ribbon through. You could also use a nautical rope, twine, or a multicolored ribbon. Whatever fits in best with your color scheme. 
it's time for summer outdoor entertaining. So let's wow our guests with a memorable coastal and beach inspired dining experience. From bright tropical greenery to an individual terrarium, your summer table setting will be dressed to impress. Now, the container that I'm using for my flower arrangement is from Home Goods, and it was originally $19.99, but I got a screaming deal on it. You can see it had been marked down a couple of times, and I picked it up for $4.50. And it's a blank slate, so it's gonna go with so many different seasons and pieces of decor. So I'm going to do a semi-permanent treatment to this container. What I did was I got a fishing net at the Dollar Tree and I got some double-sided tape. Now I took this double-sided tape and I put it along the length of my container and I did it all around the perimeter so I had strips of double-sided tape so I could then take my fishing net and begin to wrap it around. Now I started at the bottom and I took the net and I pressed it firmly onto the tape and then I just coiled it around the container. Every time I got to a piece of double-sided tape, I just pressed it firmly against the tape and it held it so nicely in place. The double-sided tape is a great option to use instead of hot glue or other kinds of glue because at the end of the season, I can take this net off and use the space for another project or another piece of home decor. Once my container was covered in the netting, I got some floral foam and I pressed it inside. And then I got some reindeer moss and I spread that over the entire surface of the top. I got some floral pins and I pressed that over the top of the moss to keep everything in place. I purchased my hydrangeas from the Dollar Tree. I got this pretty coastal blue hydrangea and kind of a pear colored hydrangea. And they're gonna be perfect for my beachy fill. So what I did with my hydrangeas was I wanted to have them kind of mimic the container, just kind of low and round. And so I got some tin snips and I trimmed down the stems. On the green ones, which I'm starting with first, I cut those down to about an eight inch stem. And then I placed one bunch on the left hand side and one bunch on the right hand side. And then I moved on to these pretty blue ones and I trimmed those as well. These were more like a 10 inch stem. And then I put the hydrangeas in the front and in the back. So that way I have a lovely, as you can see, I kind of turn it and you get the pretty flowers all the way around. So after my hydrangeas were in place, I wanted to add some leaves. I got these stems of greenery at Michael's and it's just another bit of color that you could add to it and interest. So I just placed those in some vacant spots. And then the final piece was to add these shells. Oh, look how cute those are. So what I did was I just got some wooden skewers and I cut them in half. And because my shells were curled, I just took that wooden skewer and I just pressed it right inside the little hole and it held it really snugly in place. I didn't add hot glue to mine. However, if you were concerned about the stability of it, you could add a little bit of hot glue to the end of your wooden skewer before you or put the stick inside the shell. And then I took my shells and I just put them in random spots around my arrangement to give it that final little bit of a summertime vibe. Next up is this shell topiary. I got the base to this topiary at the Dollar Tree and it is a clay pot and it came in a package of two and I took that clay pot and I filled it up with some floral foam. And then I got a grapevine ball. Now I'm using a grapevine ball for a few reasons. The first one is because I knew that there was going to be a few places on my topiary where you're going to be able to see through the shells and I wanted it to be underneath kind of a little more organic as opposed to a styrofoam ball. And then another reason is because I could move the vines around a little bit to accommodate the driftwood that was going to be poking out and, and holding up the grapevine ball. So what I did is I took that piece of driftwood and I added some hot glue to it to the top 
and then I pressed it inside that little hole that I made in the grapevine ball and I held it in place until it was dry. And then I took my topiary and I pressed it into my clay pot with the foam inside. And then I got some moss and I spread that over the surface of it. I got some floral pins to tack the moss down to the foam to hold it securely in place. And then I got my shells. These shells are from the Dollar Tree. They come in a package and I think that for the price and for what you get, it's an amazing bargain. So those are the shells that I'm going to be using. I got some hot glue and I hot glued the edges of all of the shells and then I took those shells and I placed them on top of my grapevine ball. I got some shells that were similar in size and similar in color so that my topiary would be really cohesive. So I just continued to hot glue the shells around the entire surface of the ball until it was completely covered. The final touch to our shell topiary is to add a little bit of this twine around the container. I'm just going to cut off a little bit. I got this twine at Michael's and it was $3.99, but it was on sale, of course. So that makes it a lot less expensive. So I'm just gonna tie it around my clay pot into a little bow. Try and do this upside down so you guys can see it. And that's just the last touch, and I think it just looks so beachy. Next up is this nautical vase. It was a cinch to make. I started off with a vase that I got at the Dollar Tree, and then I'm using some rope that was left over from some wreaths that I made for the front door last summer and I'm just using about a four foot long piece that was left over. I'm going to start off by adding a bit of hot glue to the end of the rope. I'm going to hot glue it directly onto the vase, and then I'm going to add a hot line of hot glue along the vase, and I'm going to press the rope into the hot glue. I'm going to continue to hot glue and add the rope into the hot glue, around the entire vase. I'm gonna hot glue and coil and hot glue and coil until I get to the end, and then I'm going to hot glue the end of the rope directly onto the vase. A few of my fantastic subscribers out there mentioned that I should get some of these finger protectors to use when I'm working with hot glue, and I found a set of three at the Dollar Tree. I used them for these projects, and none of my fingers were harmed, so thank you so much, my sweet friends, for the tip. Inside of my base, I'm gonna add about a cup of sand to the center of it. And then I'm going to add my flicker flame candle. I'm just gonna turn it on. I got a set of five of these from Amazon. They were really affordable. So I'm just gonna nestle that right inside of that sand, just twist it right in. And then I'm going to put some more of these shells and I'm gonna place them so the shell side is out and I'll just stick it right in between the candle and the front side of the vase. So I'll just do about three of those. Just pop those right down in. And then I could just leave it like this. It's beautiful like this, but I'm going to put it inside of my galvanized urn. So here's my urn and I'll just pop this right inside. And then it really takes it from a standalone piece to a centerpiece and to a show stopping idea for summer. You could make a whole bunch of these vases and line them up on your mantle or on your foyer table or just cluster them together and make a centerpiece out of them. And the best part was the price. It was so affordable. The only money that I spent was to get the vase from the Dollar Tree. Today we are doing all things lemon. I will be making three easy lemony DIYs that will liven up your summer home decor or add a bright pop of color as a summertime centerpiece. My first project is a lemon and fresh magnolia centerpiece. I'm gonna start off with two containers. You're gonna need two different sizes. The first one needs to be glass. That way when you put the lemons inside, you'll be able to see 
through the glass and see the lemon slices. And then your second container needs to be able to fit inside of your larger container and still have a gap in between. Now I have about a half an inch gap between my large container and my smaller center container, which is the perfect space so that I can place in my lemons. Now I have cut my lemons to about a quarter inch slice. Dependent on the size of your containers, you could do thicker or thinner, but what we wanna do is we wanna make sure that they can fit in nicely and still be tight enough that they will be able to stand up. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna set my lemon slices right inside of my container. It's gonna be like, like playing Connect Four, only everybody's a winner. <laughs> so I'm gonna make my first layer down um, at the beginning at the base, just put my lemons inside and you want them to be tight, like right next to each other. So just kind of jam them in there. Get them as close as you can to each other without overlapping. So once your first lemons are down, what you're gonna wanna do is on your next layer, you're gonna wanna put it right in between, right in that dip. So it's kind of like you're stacking bricks. So just keep continuing to put those lemons in stacking those lemons up until your entire container is filled with the lemon slices. Okay, now all of my lemon slices are stacked. I'm gonna turn it around for you so you can see how nicely they look. I ended up using three lemons, and again, that will vary dependent on how large or small your container is on how many lemons you're gonna need. So now I'm going to add some water to my large, mason jar in the center. And then in the center of this, I'm going to use some magnolia leaves and flowers. I have a magnolia tree in my yard and right now they are blooming. They are so beautiful. And so I knew that this was gonna be a perfect choice for my centerpiece. I have seen some arrangements with hydrangeas in there with a bunch of different varying colors that look so pretty as well. So just pick a flower that fits in with your decor and with your style. So I'm choosing to put them inside. I'm just gonna add them in. Oh, they smell so lovely, so beautiful. And because they have leaves that are kind of hanging down, it blocks the front portion of the lip of my container so you can't really see that there's another container inside and it's just gonna look so beautiful. This arrangement was so easy to make and so affordable. The only thing that I had to purchase were the lemons. I had everything else and it's going to fit in perfectly with my home decor or be a showstopper as a centerpiece. The next project is going to start off with a Dollar Tree sign. The reason why I like this sign was because of the greenery around the edges. It reminded me of lemon leaves. And while the saying is very lovely, we are going to cover it up with some pale yellow scrapbook paper. I got a measuring tool out and I measured a four by eight inch piece. I traced it out and then I cut it out with my scissors. To place my scrapbook paper onto my sign, I needed to first take up this wooden frame that was around it, which was fine because it had some gaps in the corners and it was a little ski wampus, so it needed to be evened out. So I took it off using a razor blade. I carefully put that razor blade right underneath the wood and that way it came up without pulling up the paper. Once it was loosened up a little bit, I just grabbed it and pulled it right off. Then I put some hot glue on my scrapbook paper, placed it in the center of my rectangular sign. Then I got my wooden frame pieces and I got some hot glue and I placed them evenly onto my sign. I even got my ruler out for this to make sure that it was repositioned really evenly and straight. 
As the focal point to my sign, I'm going to place some lemon slices in the center. I got this citrus wooden sticker package at the Dollar Tree and I just pulled out the lemon slices and what I did was I wanted to paint them. I got some paint at Michael's, some dark yellow paint, and I also got some white paint because I wanted to do a very subtle ombre effect with my lemon slices. So in order to get this ombre effect, I needed to add a decent amount of white paint to the yellow paint to get a pale yellow. I added a medium amount to the yellow paint to get a medium tone, and then just a little bit of white paint to the yellow paint to get a more saturated color. And then I got a fine paintbrush and I painted the rind of the lemon first and then I did the lemon segments in the center. I continued to paint each one of my lemon slices until they were all finished and then I let them completely dry which was a few hours. After they were dry, I flipped them over and there was a sticker on the back so I just took that sticker off and I replaced it with some hot glue and then I hot glued those lemon slices in the center of my frame evenly apart from each other. For just a few dollars I was able to make a custom sign that fits in so nicely with my lemon theme. Another option for a lemon themed centerpiece is this display. I got this container at Home Goods. It was on sale for $10 and I loved the pale yellow color on it. I also loved the size and the scalloped edges. I thought they were so pretty. In the center of my container, I've added in some floral foam and I made a dome shape out of the foam. That way when I add my lemons, they kind of rise up a little bit and you'll be able to see each individual lemon. To the surface of my foam, I'm going to add some reindeer moss. Again, this is from the Dollar Tree. I use this almost in every single arrangement that I make. I would rather see some moss peeking out through my lemons or flowers or whatever it is as opposed to seeing the foam. So what I'm gonna do with this moss is I'm just going to cover the surface of my foam. I'm just gonna put it on all around and then to attach the foam and the moss together, I'm gonna use some floral pins you can buy floral pins where almost any florals are found. I get them at Hobby Lobby. I've also purchased them at Michael's. This will keep the foam in place and stuck to the moss as well. Everything will be nicely secured together. Now that my foam is covered with the moss, I'm going to add some greenery. I got this greenery at Michael's and I'm gonna add it in two stages. I'm gonna put a few in right now and then I'm gonna put a few in after the lemons go on. That way I have some greenery that's under the lemons and then I have some greenery that's over the top of the lemons. So I'll just add a couple of, probably three. And then I'm gonna add my lemons in. Now I got these lemons at Ross. I have seen them at Michael's. I've even seen some at the Dollar Tree or you could use some fresh lemons. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna evenly Place these throughout my container. And again, because we have that dome in the middle, we'll be able to see them really easily um, as they kind of climb up the foam. So here we go. They look pretty good, pretty even. And then I've got these gaps in between the lemons, as you see. And that's where the second wave of these greenery pieces are gonna come in. So I'm just gonna turn it. I can add some greenery pieces just all over. Just stick it in. And because we had the foam in there, the greenery will go in there really easily. Okay, now we've got our greenery inside. And the last bit that we're going to add are some chalkboard signs. I got these cute chalkboard picks at Michael's and I wrote easy peasy lemon squeezy because that's how easy this arrangement was. It was easy peasy lemon squeezy, so I'm just gonna poke those right in. I've added some ribbons in some pale yellow and chevron, and look how cute this arrangement. And again, it was so easy and really affordable to make. You could use any container. Again, fresh or artificial lemons and just a little bit of greenery, and you've got a beautiful arrangement for summer. 
Each of my three DIYs really were easy peasy lemon squeezy to make and they were so affordable. They look so bright and shiny on their own, but together they look so cheerful and like a bright ray of summer sunshine. We're gonna start off with a tablecloth. This is actually a piece of Americana inspired fabric. I just cut it and folded it to the size that I needed to fit my buffet table. And then on top, I'm gonna to place this riser. So when I put my flag down, it will really be the focal point. To create this flag, you'll need a piece of wood, minus 24 inches wide by 12 inches tall, two strings of Dollar Tree Star Lights, and red, white, and blue craft paint. I measured and evenly spaced out 20 holes in the upper left-hand corner for my stars. With a quarter inch drill bit, I drilled holes large enough so my lights would fit completely through. I sanded down any rough areas so that the surface was nice and smooth, and then I wiped the wood down with a damp cloth so I'd have a clean surface for better paint adhesion. I used painter's tape to evenly section off my stripes. With a sponge brush, I painted on two coats of red paint so I would have a deep saturated color. I also painted on two coats of the navy blue paint as well. I let the paint dry for two hours before removing the tape. As you can see, by using the painter's tape, you get a nice crisp edge. I taped over my completely dry red stripes so I could paint on my white stripe. Again, I painted on two coats of paint so I could get a bright white stripe. I let it dry for two hours and then removed the tape to reveal sharp, clean lines. Once the paint is completely dry, it's time to add the lights. I simply poked my lights completely through the hole and pulled it through. Now these stars just pop on and off of the lights. That way you can easily put them in through the hole that you drilled. And you could just leave them off, but I like the stars on it because we have stars and stripes on our flag. Once you're finished placing the lights through the holes, just snap the stars back on. The stars will also help prevent the lights from sliding out through the back. Next, I used the same painter's tape to secure my battery pack to the back side of the flag. On this 4th of July, celebrate with some light up stars and bright colorful stripes with this easy and inexpensive flag. This festive focal point is a great way to add a touch of patriotism into your decor. I'm gonna add these blue lanterns. I'm gonna spruce them up a little bit with some red, white, and blue chevron striped ribbons. And then inside I have some candles. And what I did was I put them on top of some tin cans. And then I wrapped some twine around the tin cans to give them a little more festive feel. The addition of this galvanized can and burlap ribbon topper give this lantern an Americana vibe, ideal for this patriotic holiday. These mason jars and tin cans I already had. I love repurposing household items into seasonal decor. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some food in these and then I'm gonna use these tin cans as bases and then as risers as you've already seen to put my candles on top of. Next time you have an empty can, don't throw it out. Just remove the label, give it a good wash and create a rustic vase. To make these patriotic marshmallows, I found some red, white, and blue straws at the Dollar Tree. And all I did was I poked them into some large marshmallows, I dipped them into some white Wilton melting chocolates, and then I sprinkled some red sanding sugar over the top. I decorated these pretzel rods to look like little flags. The first thing I did was I dipped the top into some white coating chocolate. I let it set for 30 minutes and then I dipped it again in some blue coating chocolates. And after that was set, I flipped some little red stripes over the top and I added some sanding sugar to the top to look like little stars on my flag. These were a cinch to make, but look impressive. The red, white, and blue colored melting chocolates help reinforce my holiday theme. I got these plastic goblets at the Dollar Tree, and all I did was I filled them up with some strawberry jello, topped them off with some Cool Whip, and then added a little bit of blue sanding sugar to the top. In place of jello, you could do a yogurt parfait, fruit cup, or strawberry pound cake trifle. 
Any 4th of July colored food or dessert would be a perfect addition. I can't think of an easier way to bring in that patriotic feeling than just by cutting out a few pieces of watermelon. What I did was I used my star cookie cutter and I cut out some star shapes. And then I placed a wooden skewer through the center. And then to prevent that icky, sticky juice from running down your arm, I'm gonna use these cupcake liners. I'm just gonna poke my skewer right through the center and then pull it up. And then I have a little bit of a shield. These watermelon stars are a great handheld snack on the go, especially with the addition of the cupcake liner juice drip protector. Make your 4th of July decor pop with simple, easy, and inexpensive touches to provide a patriotic spirit. So many times we focus on our interior decor that we neglect the outside. And the outside is the first impression that visitors or passerbys get of our home. So because it's a transitional area, we can take some of our indoor decor and bring it to the outside. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is just give your space a good washing so you have a clean space to work with. Next, I'm creating a seating area. Having a bench or chairs really encourages your guests to sit down, relax, and enjoy those warm summer nights. To add style and warmth, I'm draping a neutral colored blanket to soften the hard lines of my bench and adding two beachy coastal colored pillows. I added this cozy knitted blanket and these pillows covered in outdoor fabric. Now I suggest buying items that are covered in outdoor fabric because the fabric will last longer because it's specifically made to be used outside. The summer theme that I'm using this year is a beach and coastal style theme. So to add to that, I'm gonna put these wreaths on my front door so that my coastal theme is introduced before you even enter my house. Let's dress up our front door with a pair of easy DIY wreaths. I got these metal wreath forms at the Dollar Tree. I knew some of the metal was going to show through and green just wasn't in my color scheme, so I decided to paint them gold. I used spray paint to thoroughly cover both the front and the back of my forms. This sisal rope is from Walmart and I got 50 feet for only $5.44. To attach my rope to my form, I put a line of hot glue along my metal form and placed the rope on top. I continued gluing the rope around my form until it was completely covered. I wrapped my rope loosely and left a few gaps because I knew I needed the gaps to attach my embellishments. For extra detail, I'm adding Dollar Tree twine in three places along my wreath. I just wrapped the twine around the wreath and tied it in the back. To create my bows, I'm using navy blue polka dot and white chevron ribbons. I just looped, twisted, and then looped the ribbons together to form my bows, and then wrapped a piece of floral wire around it to secure. I placed the bows together and wrapped the wire around them both to tie them together. To attach the bows to my wreath, I threaded the floral wire through the gaps in my wreath and twisted the wires together to secure them to the wreath. Now it's time to add some beachy elements, like these shells from the Dollar Tree. I simply hot glued several shells onto the center of my ribbons, which immediately added that coastal beachy vibe. The final few elements are adding a sprig of summer greenery, which I just poked through a gap in my wreath and a chalkboard sign with a written beach themed message. I'm using command hooks. I prefer these over the over the door hangers because once you put these on, they'll stay in place. Your friends won't doubt they're welcome here when they're greeted by these wreaths. I purchased these lanterns at Target. And inside, instead of just using a candle, I decided to add some flowers. I also put some of this fabric, the coordinating fabric on top. You could also use a potted plant, or you could add some more candles, or you could add some decor that fits in with your theme. 
Adding flowers inside this pair of lanterns is a cute, unique way to display your flowers and an alternative to just using candles. I planted some flowers and some greenery inside of this urn and to add another whimsical touch, I thought I would add this seahorse. So what I did was I bought this metal wreath holder and I placed it inside and all I have to do is put this right on top of the hook. This seahorse fits in perfectly with my color scheme and beach theme. A windmill, a beach sign, or a wind chime could be great alternative options as well. The final touch is this welcome sign. I got this sign at Hobby Lobby and I love using chalkboard signs because you can customize them to any decor, party, or holiday, and all you have to do is write out your message. I wrote my home sweet home sign using chalk pens. The pens help you get crisp, clean lines. I also added a coordinating piece of fabric to tie my decor together. We're gonna start off decorating with a blank table, and I have these boxes because I want extra height and dimension on my table. So before I put my tablecloth on, I'm gonna put these boxes where I know that I want extra height. The variation in heights gives your table interest and dimension. It's important to add the boxes first so you don't have to backtrack after the tablecloth is already in place. We're gonna start off by placing a neutral tablecloth down and then we're gonna to top it off with this fishing net that I got at Hobby Lobby and it will set the scene perfectly. I love the way that my spring lanterns turned out, so I'm using lanterns again. These galvanized lanterns are perfect for my summer decor. I've added some driftwood and shell garland, and then on top I put some ribbons in sandy tans and coastal blues, and then in the center I have these shells, and I think it looks fantastic. this driftwood and shell garland at Ross for $7.99. I cut the garland into two segments, one for each lantern, and draped a piece across the top of each lantern. Next, I created my bows by looping, pinching, and twisting my wired white and tan chevron ribbon into large bows. I wrapped a piece of floral wire in the center of my loops, flipped the bow over, and twisted the wires together to secure. I repeated the process of looping, twisting, and attaching with another coastal colored ribbon as well. To reinforce the beachy theme, I hot glued the back of several different sized and colored shells and placed them in the center of my ribbon to create a custom and unique focal point. This seaside inspired bow topper transformed a plain lantern into a stunning coastal chic themed piece of decor, ready to be put on display for all to enjoy. I wanted to put sand in the bottom of my lanterns, but I foresaw that being a mess. So an alternative option is these bath salts. I got these at the Dollar Tree. They are French lavender and citrus. So not only will my decor look good, it will smell good too. I scattered my sandy beach inspired bath salts along the bottom of my lantern and then evened it out into a smooth level layer. I'm gonna put these flicker flame candles inside and they're on a timer so they'll come on automatically every night. And then I'm also gonna add some shells. The candles provide a soft glow that gives our table warmth and ambiance and the added light illuminates the shells below. Do you want a piece of seasonal decor but you don't have one? That's no problem. By adding extra details to a plain piece of decor you already own, you can transform your original decor into a custom piece of summer decor. I found these glass orbs covered in fish netting at Ross for $6.99. I saw some similar ones on the Pottery Barn website for $29.50 a piece, so I feel like I got a great deal. And I haven't seen them very much, so I feel like it's a unique piece. And they're classy and elegant with the glass, and they'll fit in perfectly with my coastal decor. I'm placing my glass orbs in the center of my table and staggering the heights. I'm placing one higher by setting it on top of a nautical themed box. The next piece I'm gonna to add to my tabletop decor is this captain's wheel. I got it from Hobby Lobby and it's the perfect color. It's neutral and it'll fit in nicely with my neutral tablescape. It's also a larger piece, so it'll add extra height to the back. 
Placing the captain's wheel in the back gives extra height without blocking any decor pieces. It also adds another whimsical seaside touch to my tablescape. I knew I wanted a statement piece, something that would really stand out and that I could use for years to come. So I decided to make a gold string art anchor. To create my anchor, I have a large wooden plank, gold jewelry cord, one and a quarter inch finishing nails, and paper to trace out my anchor shape. After creating and cutting out my anchor template, I placed it in the center of my plank for a guide. I used a ruler to mark where I wanted to place my nails. I placed them every quarter inch. I hammered the nails into my board around the entire perimeter of my anchor. When all of my nails were in place, I removed the paper template by simply pulling it off. Now it's time to weave our gold cord back and forth along the anchor. There is no set pattern for the cord, just thread it along the entire anchor in a random pattern until it's as dense and full as you want it to be. I weaved this nautical rope through the gaps in the nails, just throughout the entire length of the board, and I got the rope from the Dollar Tree, and then I also added some shells and some driftwood and a little starfish. I just slid the rope through the nails at random places along my anchor. For added detail, I hot glued some extra seaside touches, like shells, driftwood, and a starfish. I will say that this took me a long time to do. Between hammering in all of the nails and weaving the thread, it took me a couple of hours. So if you have a lazy summer afternoon with nothing to do, this is a great project for you. The finished piece is definitely the center point of my tablescape. Creating this string art anchor was easy, affordable, and it's the perfect piece of coastal decor. Our final nautical touch is to scatter a few little shells throughout the table. This coastal theme home decor makes me love summer just a little bit more. I'm so happy with the way that the final look came out. Instead of combing my yard for sticks or searching the closet for wire hangers, I had the idea to make my own roasting sticks so I can store them and use them over and over again. These roasting sticks will be a fun one-of-a-kind addition to your next s'mores party, so let me show you how I made them. I got two three foot long by five eighths inch wooden dowels from Michaels and what I did was I took my power tool jigsaw and I cut it into three one foot segments. I measured out one foot segments and taped off the areas where I was going to cut with painter's tape, which helps prevent splintering. With a sharpie, I marked lines around my dowels so I would have a guide to follow when I was sawing. I cut along the line with my jigsaw to create my segments. Don't worry, the camera was zoomed in and everyone was a safe distance away from the blade. Next, I got out my drill and I drilled a hole into the center of each one of my wooden dowels. With my Sharpie, I made a mark in the center of my dowel so I had a center point reference. With a 5 8 inch drill bit, I drilled a hole in the dowel and went down about 3 fourths of the length of the drill bit. Now the handle of the roasting stick is prepped and ready for the skewer. I got these fork skewers at Walmart. They were in the camping section and they came in a set of four for only $1.88. Some alternative options to use instead of these fork skewers could be kebab skewers or pieces of thick gauged metal. These skewers are pretty short and I want my kids to be as far away from the fire as possible. So adding extra length to the end and a non-heat conducting handle was an essential measure that will give this mama a little more peace of mind. The handles on the end of these skewers are too wide to fit inside my wooden dowel. So what I did was I took my jigsaw, since this is a power tool challenge, and I cut it in half. Now if you don't have a jigsaw, you could use some needle nose pliers and just push them together to thin them out. I used a metal cutting blade to cut through the center of the handle. Now these skewers will fit inside the wooden dowel. 
After I put my skewers into the wooden dowel, I use E6000 to glue it together. This is a great glue, it's really sturdy. If you don't have this, you could use some super glue or some liquid nails, either one of those would work. You can purchase E6000 at most craft and hardware stores. I put a dab of glue in the bottom of the wooden dowel first and then inserted the metal skewer. I pushed it in firmly until the skewer was pressed up against the back of the hole. I added extra E6000 until the skewer was completely encased in glue. Then I let the glue dry for several hours. Now it's time to add a little pizzazz to the handle of our skewer. What I used is this white copper metallic spray paint. It actually looks like rose gold. And then with the alternating stripe, I'm gonna use this white craft paint. I evenly taped off my stripe design with painter's tape and then sprayed the white copper paint thoroughly on the top side of the wooden handle. After one hour of dry time, I flipped the skewers over and painted the other side. Then I placed them in a bucket so they could dry evenly and so the paint wouldn't smudge. After I spray painted on the white copper paint, I let it dry for about two hours before removing the tape. Then I taped back over the top of the white copper paint and then I painted this exposed area white. Letting the paint dry completely before removing the tape helps your lines remain sharp and crisp and cuts down on the paint seeping through. After taping over the dried copper paint, I used a sponge brush to paint the white craft paint on the exposed area. Then I let it dry overnight before removing the tape. In order to remember whose roasting stick is whose, I decided to put various cookout words on the handles. That way, each guest remembers which stick is theirs. Ooey gooey, yummy, toasty, roasty, and s'mores are the words I chose for my skewers. First, I traced the word out with a pencil, and then I went back over it with a Sharpie permanent marker. You could also label them with names or paint them in various shades of your favorite color. I decided to do my own s'mores station. What I added was a variety of chocolates. I have regular milk chocolate, peanut butter cups, and some cookies and cream chocolates. I also have a variety of cookies. I've got the regular graham crackers. I have some shortbread striped cookies, and I also have some fudge covered graham crackers. Have fun creating your own s'mores station. Pick your favorite cookies and chocolate bars, add toffee bits, caramel sauce, or Nutella. You could even create a s'mores menu, showing different ways to combine cookies and toppings to make a unique flavored s'more. I decided to use just plain large marshmallows. There is such a variety of flavors and shapes nowadays, you can really go wild. I assembled my own fire pit. I got these buffet warming canisters at the Dollar Tree, placed them in a divided box and put some rocks around them to hold them in place and act as a heat buffer. I incorporated a chalkboard banner and I also used a chalk marker to write a fun message that goes along with the theme of our party. I hope you enjoyed this DIY power tool roasting sticks tutorial. I'm so excited to make s'mores and I think we should get to it. So grab your DIY roasting stick and gather your friends and family for an evening of ooey gooey fun. Whether you're in the backyard hosting a s'mores party for the neighbors or enjoying a quiet evening with family, this sweet station is a perfect choice. So grab a cookie or two, a toasty marshmallow, and make the most out of time spent with loved ones. I hope I showed you everything you need to set up a s'mores bar your crowd will love. It was on clearance for $3.74, which is a great way to start off a project. I love a bargain. Inside of the opening of the base shell, I'm going to place in some floral foam. I'm just gonna wedge it right in there so it's really tight and secure. To the top of the foam, I'm going to add some reindeer moss. I like to use moss over the foam because if you do see through the succulents or whatever flower you happen to be working with, I personally like to look at moss as opposed to the foam. So I am going to be putting reindeer moss over the top and I'm going to be securing the moss to the foam using floral pins. The succulents that I'm using for this arrangement are from the Dollar Tree. They had such a nice variety of sizes and shaped ones there and you can't go wrong with spending a dollar per succulent. So I started with the longest stemmed succulent first. I placed that at the top and then with these other smaller ones, they came in a pot. 
And so what I did to get those out was I just kind of wiggled them a little bit and they just popped right out. And they had a bit of a stem and so I just placed that stem right inside of the floral foam. And then I placed the smaller succulents running down the shell container. I used a total of four succulents, which was the perfect amount. This way, each succulent was close enough to each other but didn't overlap. And you could see each individual succulent. For a few dollars, I got this beautiful arrangement, this shell and all the succulents inside, and I think it was a great bargain. I got this Captain's Will frame at the Dollar Tree, and I immediately thought, that frame will look great inside of a frame. And so that's what we're gonna do today. It's almost like a shadow box. So the first thing that I did with this Captain's Will was I decided I wanted to stain it. So I used a Minwax Walnut Shade I got a sponge brush and I brushed that stain over the top of the circle backing first. I placed the stain on it evenly and then I got a paper towel and I wiped off the stain. I like to do that because I believe it brings out the wood grain a little bit better and it makes sure that the stain is even throughout the entire surface of the wood that you're working with. That way one part is a little bit darker than the other, it's all cohesive. So I continued to put the stain on the captain's wheel, on the handles, and on the back side of everything. And then I wiped it off again with that paper towel, and then I let it dry for a few hours. I'm placing a compass inside of my captain's wheel. I found this compass online. It was a free printable, and I will leave a link to where I got it in my description box below. So I printed it off and then I got the circular backer to the frame, placed that on top of my compass, and then I got a pencil and I traced around the circle. Then I got a pair of scissors, cut out my compass. To embellish my captain's wheel a little bit further, I'm going to add some gold laying cord to each of the handles. I got this laying cord at Michael's in the jewelry section. I got a dab of hot glue and I place that on the back of the handle, put the end of the laying cord in the hot glue, and then I began to wrap it around the handle. I did it about 10 times, and then I cut it off, added another dab of hot glue, and I pressed the laying cord into the glue, which secured everything together. And then I continued to do it to each one of the handles. And then I placed that compass inside of my captain's will and place the backer on the back. Now that my captain's will is finished, I'm going to place it into a larger frame that again is from the Dollar Tree. But before I do that, I'm going to place some scrapbook paper behind as a backer. I love this scrapbook paper. It's the perfect selection for this piece. It looks like water and I just love the sparkles that it has on it. It adds some extra dimension. What I did was I took the mat out of the frame, I placed it on top of my scrapbook paper, I got a pencil and I traced around it, and then I cut it out. Then I got my captain's wheel, I added some hot glue to the back of the captain's wheel, and pressed it firmly into the center of the scrapbook paper. Now that everything is glued together and finished, I can put it all back into the frame. I love the way that this turned out. It looks like an expensive piece from a department store. And the only money that I spent was $1 on the captain's wheel. I had everything else. So for a dollar, I am a happy camper. My next project is a look for less. I found my inspiration piece on the Pottery Barn website. It was these wooden link objects. I just fell in love with them. However, I did not fall in love with the price. It was $99 and that was just too much for me to pay. So I decided I would make it myself. The first thing that I needed to do was find some wood that was similar to my inspiration piece. I found a cutting board at TJ Maxx that was similar in color. And I turned it over and bonus, it was on clearance for only $6. I was so excited. So I brought it home and I measured it out and I found that I could get four oval links off of this one cutting board. So I made a template. Here's my template. 
After I measured it, I got a piece of paper and I cut it to the size that I needed, and then I drew an oval. Now, on my inspiration piece, their ovals were kind of misshaped a little bit and had some curved edges, so I did the same thing with mine. It's not even, as you can see, and when I drew it out, I kind of made some parts thicker and some parts a little bit thinner. I traced out my ovals with a white colored pencil, that way I could see it when I was cutting. The first thing that I did was I got my drill and I drilled access hole points into the center of the ovals. This way I could set my saw blade inside of that and it would be an access hole point, that way I wouldn't have to cut through the sides of the links. So I cut the circles out in the center first with my jigsaw and then I cut the ovals themselves out. I kept doing that until all four of my links were cut out. After I had my oval links, I decided I needed to sand down the edges, so I got some sandpaper and I sanded it down until it was really smooth. The Pottery Barn ovals were linked together with some, some magic and some extra steps and some craftsmanship, I'm sure. But guess what? Rope's gonna work just fine for me. So I have this rope upstairs and I cut it into about six inch segments. And I'm going to take two of my links, put them together, wrap the rope around it, and then hot glue the edges together. I repeated this three times to link all four of my wooden ovals together. The final thing that I'm going to do to my links is I'm going to add some coconut oil to seal up the wood and to bring out the wood grain. Now I did these three links last night and I left this one for you guys to see the difference. So I just have just plain old coconut oil. You can get this at the grocery store pretty much anywhere. So I'm just gonna take, whoop, it's gonna take a little bit. I'm gonna put it on my paper towel and then I'm just going to rub it along the surface of my link, all over the wood. Can you see? I don't know if you can see the difference. I'll try and zoom in a little bit. But it just makes it look so much richer and so much nicer. It really enhances the color of the wood and it makes it so the wood grain is so much more visible. And it's a good way to seal up your wood too. These nautical links turned out beautifully, and the only money that I spent was $6 on that wooden cutting board. I had the rope and the hot glue and everything else, so that's a big savings from the $99 Pottery Barn look. Now, I really love the way that they look for summer. However, this is something that I could display all year long on a coffee table or on a shelf or in an office on a desk. Since we drilled, sawed, and sanded on that last project, this project is gonna be a lot easier. We are going to make a beautiful nautical centerpiece. I'm gonna start off by using this glass container. It's rectangular and I got it a few years ago at Home Goods, and it was $6.99. Inside of my glass container, I'm gonna add about two cups of sand to the bottom. Just lay down a nice bed of sand. Try and get it all in there. Okay, just gonna shake it around. Get a nice smooth surface on the bottom. Okay, so I've got sand and then I'm gonna add these shells. Again, these are the shells from the Dollar Tree. I really love using them. They've got such a wide variety of sizes, shaped and colored on these shells. So they're gonna be so pretty on top of the sand. Again, I'm just gonna lay these out evenly until the entire surface of the bottom of my container is covered. Okay, to the back side of my vase, I'm going to add a palm frond. I got this from my yard. I live in Florida, I love living here. So this was easy for me just to get. However, if you don't have access to a fresh palm frond, you can just get an artificial one at Michael's or any place that florals are found. So I'm just going to place that in the back and then I'm going to add in some water. I'm going to do it really slowly because I don't want to upset the sand and move the shells around. 
So I'm just gonna start off really slowly at the first and then I can add it in a little bit quicker. I'm gonna fill this up until it's about two thirds of the way filled. And also as time goes on, the sand that we kind of uh, broke up that is kind of floating around in the water, it will settle. And then to the top of this, I'm just gonna put in some floating candles. And that's it. To have my shells lay flat and face the front, I'm going to drill two holes into my shell. Now, I'm not gonna lie, the first time I did this, I assumed that these shells were gonna crack and splinter and break apart but they didn't do it. And then let me show you how I did it that made it so they stayed intact. I got my drill and I'm using a really small drill bit. And I'm going to drill in really slowly at the beginning. So I'm just gonna place it on my shell. I'm gonna start drilling slowly. Don't floor it at the beginning, just slowly ease into it. And that's how you do it. So you can see that I have my hole and it didn't crack. And now I'm going to do another hole on the other side. About maybe half an inch apart. Again, I'm gonna start off really slowly. Okay. And now I have my two holes on my shelves. So I'm just gonna repeat this process with the rest of the shells, and then I will be able to hang these on my garland. I'm going to string my shells on some cotton twine that I got at the Dollar Tree, and I'm also going to be using some pearls. Look at these cute little pearl beads. Of course, if you have shells, you've gotta have pearls to go along with the shells, right? So I started out by putting the bead on first, bead then shell, bead then shell, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it through the back side of the shell first, and then I'll put it right back through to the front side, and then I'll just pull it. As you can see, I already did a few. And then next I'm gonna, I'm gonna do my bead, and then I'm gonna do one more shell. Again, I'm starting from the back side, and then I'll thread it through the front side. And then I'm going to finish off with one last pearl. Okay, now that everything's on, look at that, look how cute. You can make these as big or as short or as small as you wanted. This is about right for what I need. And then I am going to just tie a knot at the end. And then I'm gonna be left with about a foot of excess twine on the end, so I've got about this much, it's about a foot. That way I can tie it onto, in this case, I'm gonna be tying it onto the captain's wheel. And then on this side, I'll do the same. I'm just gonna cut this twine about a foot, and I will make that knot. And now our garland is finished. Nothing says, welcome to my home, like a big brown door. Wah, wah. We're gonna be refreshing this space today to get rid of those go away vibes and make this much more cheerful and inviting. Now that the warmer months are upon us, I wanted to make this outdoor space a little more enjoyable because we love spending time outside during this time of year. So in order to do that, we're going to first of all address this front door. It's double doors, it's brown, it's kind of like a black hole, so we're going to add some wreaths to the front. I'm going to make these wreaths with some Dollar Tree forms. I wanted to add a gold accent to my wreath and I thought changing the greenery or adding some gold to the leaves would be a great idea to do this. I purchased a stem of magnolia branches at Target. I pulled the leaves off of the stem to get individual leaves. And 
then I took my leaves outside and I got some gold coat Rust-Oleum spray paint. I added a generous layer of paint to the top portion of the leaves. I made sure that each part of the leaves was covered in the gold and then I let it dry for 30 minutes. Now that my greenery is all prepped, we're gonna begin adding the leaves and the florals to the wreath form. I purchased some burgundy and copper colored hydrangeas and roses at Hobby Lobby. I also purchased a stem of white mums at the Dollar Tree. Now the reason why I'm going with this color scheme is because I don't change my wreaths with the changing holidays and seasons. I like to put one wreath out and let it cover a couple of months. So by using this color scheme, it will be able to last me throughout the entire summer and even into fall. Back to the wreath, the first thing that I'm going to do is add a stem of cream flowers. I'm going to curve this long stem so it mimics the curvature of the wreath. Next, I got some floral wire and I cut a six inch segment and I wrapped it around the stem and then around the wreath form and twisted the wires together to secure the flowers to the wreath. I added two segments of floral wire to the stem so it would be securely attached to the wreath form. Next, I added my hydrangeas. I put one at the top. I tucked that stem into the wreath form. Then I got a segment of wire and wrapped it around the stem to secure it to the wreath. On the exact opposite side of the top hydrangea, I'm putting the lower hydrangea. Again, I'll just tuck that stem into that wreath form and wrap it tightly with the floral wire. In the center, I added a burgundy rose, tucked it in, and I added that floral wire to make sure that this rose wouldn't twist around once it was on the wreath form. Next, we're gonna move on to the leaves. We're gonna take those large hydrangea leaves and the gold magnolia leaves, and we're going to hot glue them to the wreath form. I added some hot glue to the back of the leaves, and I pressed them up against the wreath form. I did this several times around the wreath until I got the look that I wanted. We're gonna pause for just a second and we're gonna add these wreaths to my door because I was looking at myself in the camera and I'm standing in front of a big brown door and it's not that pretty. So we're gonna add these. So these can be my backdrop as I continue to talk about how to make my wreaths. All I did was I added some command hooks to my door. I like using command hooks because you can take them off and move them around if you haven't done anything permanent. See, isn't it already a hundred times better? Now we're gonna personalize these wreaths by adding a gold bow and a monogram B to the tails. I purchased this gold ribbon at Michael's. It's actually Christmas ribbon. And I got it after Christmas for 70% off, so it was a great deal. I took my ribbon and I looped it twice to get a bow shape. I cut a segment of my floral wire long enough so that I could wrap it around the center of my bow, but be prepared for adding it eventually to the wreath form. So I cut it longer, that way I had some excess wire coming out the back. I wrapped this segment of wire around the center of the bow and twisted it several times to secure the loops together. And finally, I cut the tails of the bow. I folded the bow together and cut the ribbon diagonally so I would get a V shape at the end of the ribbon. Joyous of shooting outside. To create this V monogram, I'm going to be using my Cricut Maker. My Cricut cut out four decals onto a white sheet of iron-on vinyl. I weeded the excess vinyl away, then I placed the B at the bottom of the ribbon tail. I put my easy press over the top, set the timer for 30 seconds at 280 degrees, which fused the vinyl to the ribbon. I repeated the process with the remaining four tails to get my four monogrammed Bs. And then I attached my ribbon to the center of the wreath by taking that excess wire and wrapping it around the wreath form and twisting it in the back. Now it has to hang by something. So I added a white ribbon to the top. I cut a segment of ribbon, 
wrapped it around the top of the wreath form and then tied a knot tightly. And then I trimmed off the tails. And at this point, I just rotated that ribbon so that the knot was hiding in the wreath form. And that way you couldn't see it. Once this first wreath was done, I moved on to the second wreath. I repeated the exact same process. However, you can tell that I did a mirror image on this side so that things would be on the opposite side. I like doing that because I have double doors. It adds a little bit more interest to it. What a difference these wreaths made to this front door. The colors complement the color of the front door. They also add some great interest. They look so classy. And if you come to my house and you see the monogram B, you'll know that you're at the right spot. Now that we're done with the race, we're gonna come and address this side of the porch. It is completely blank and it needs to be refreshed and beautified. We're gonna start off by adding a bench. Now, typically this bench is inside for the majority of the year, but during these summer months, we like to sit outside and enjoy the beautiful weather. So it's nice to have a seating area. You can also sit here while you're waiting for your guests to arrive or to greet them. I'm also going to be adding a chunky blanket into the corner. I'm just gonna drape it over the edge. It's gonna make it so nice and cozy. Now, I'm not gonna keep this outside all summer long. I'm just gonna take it in and out. That way when we're sitting out here, we can have something soft to sit on or something cozy to snuggle up in. To add a pop of color, I'm going to add a pillow. Now, this is an outdoor pillow. This has the outdoor fabric. These are great to have outside because they're weatherproof and that way they can be out all season long during all kinds of inclement weather. And it adds a little more coziness and it brings in another element of color. Thank you. Do you guys remember this bird cage that we made? Well, we transformed a couple of weeks back. This is gonna be a perfect opportunity to use this. Originally I put flowers in it. I'm putting a candle in it now. You can put a citronella candle in it that will ward off some bugs and it will also add a really nice ambiance while you're outside. Next, we have a brass tray. Are you guys wondering where all these things are coming from? I'll show you who's behind the door when we're all finished. But we're gonna put a big brass tray down so that I can add some refreshments to the top. To the tray, I'm gonna add this pretty beverage dispenser that I purchased at Target. I have some glass mugs, and then you've got to be able to snack on something. So I have some fresh strawberries that also add a pop of color. So if you're wondering who is handing me things behind the door, it's this guy. I love having twins. They are such good boys. Not many teenagers would want to hand their mom things out of the door for a porch refresh. So thank you, boys. Well, we're all finished. What do you think? It was a lot of fun to give this space an update and a refresh. I hope you got some inspiration or some ideas today so that you could feel like you could refresh your outdoor space for the warm upcoming season that is ahead of us. As always, I appreciate you stopping by. Thank you so much for watching.